What's up, fellow lords of gaming, and welcome back to another episode of Marvel Future Fight. <clears throat> so I figured before tonight's update, I give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek at some things that you make that you should make sure that you do. Um, basically, there's a couple of events that are still inside the shop. That's the tier three character acquisition mission and the transcendent character mission. Now they still have those events running. Times already run out on the premium comic cards and CTPs and the discount for the uniforms. Obviously they didn't want to give us the uniforms for free. So it is what it is, right? But we move along. Um, and there's some patch notes inside here that I want to make you guys aware of. But before we, well, I guess we'll do that in a second. Um, let's get inside the patch details here though really quickly all right so <clears throat> so basically we've got uh hella uh heimdall and sif getting costumes and hella is getting her t3 awakening skill which is awesome uh so basically let's take it let's take a breakdown look at uh hella first of all because i think she's going to be the most amped up character that people are excited to see because we've been asking for hella uh t3 for I don't know now it seems like better part of three three years or something like that but she's getting a very interesting buff inside her character kit so i want to take a look at that so um i think the best way to do this however though is to take a look at how she is currently represented inside the game versus how uh she is going to be represented so i'm going to pull this up and i'll give you guys a rundown of her skills and things that that you expect to see from the update hopefully this pans out to be true and we'll all be happy but <clears throat> let's take a look so this is Hella's original costume. We don't really have a good image yet of what her costume looks like, um, other than the what the the, the sizzle reel that the uh, the team came up with. So we know there's going to be horns upon horns basically for the character. But let's break down these skills. All right. So first of all, she is definitely going to upgrade to her Gathering of the Dead leadership. Um, yeah. So it's going to be all allies now are going to receive a sixty percent increase of energy attack a 60 percent increase of energy attack that's going to be really good not to mention on her uniform you can look at the uniform bonus here for her previous ragnarok uniform and you can see that all allies receiving a basic damage dealt to superhero 15 percent and decreasing rece damage received from superheroes by 15 percent well this is increasing by a whopping 50 percent so she's getting uh increasing basic damage dealt to superheroes by 50 and she's getting decreased basic damage by 30 percent so this is more than double in terms of damage out and damage dealt the only bad thing about this is is that this is only gonna work in a few ways when you're playing world boss ultimate there are characters <clears throat> that this will work against like quicksilver wanda and um and cable inside there but this isn't going to work in a lot of the game modes primarily so for instance if you want to use if you're going to use try to use this ability against world boss legend characters like mephisto and Null, this is just not going to work now the place where this could be really beneficial however though is inside of pv E because you know we know like Gilgamesh and uh Sentry these are uh, you know characters that are in there that are going to be beneficial to play the only thing is whether or not Hella will pan out to be a PvE uh PvP character and whether or not you're interested in that at, at all as well <coughs> so let's take a look at her um <clears throat> Jesus Christ Let's take a look at her passives inside here. So basically her passive Death Embrace is getting a change to it and is now going to be called, basically I'm going off of what they are because they're saying something different inside here. Like she basically has two passives inside here and you, we've got a little bit of different ones. So uh, Death's Embrace is now going to be called Dark Protection. It's going to apply to self and she's getting an increase all resistance by 50% and an increased chain hit damage by 20% and then decreased damage re damage received from reflected attacks by 50%. So there's no more summon character basic attacks, basic defenses or increases HP uh you know by 20% and you know the duration of summon characters by 20%. She's basically all that she needs. She's queen badass bitch, right? So we don't need that anymore. 
And then when we look at Throne of Niflheim, we can see that she previously had a guaranteed dodge rate and all debuff effect, increase all debuff effects by 25%. Her new skill, Lady of Despair, tier two passive, is going to increase the guaranteed dodge rate by 30%, and then give super armor and increase all basic defenses by 40%, as well as giving decreasing the basic damage received by 25%. So this is actually looking like a lot better for her. Not to mention she already has reflect all attacks, which is going to be uber fucking good anyways, right? And then we start to take a look at some of Hella's skills. So you can look at Hella's skill and be like, yo, man, there wasn't a lot here to go <laughs> go on in the first place. So improvements were improvements overall. There's not a lot changing in terms of her first two skills. Uh, basically, they're still the same skill. They're just uh, the attack range on two has been increased. And then the hit count from four to eight has been increased on Blades of Hell. That's basically all it is these uh stats right here for the basic attack base and defense they have been buffed 15 20 and 40 is basically what they are so we'll see how those skills pan out ultimately so i'm really looking forward though to see her third fourth and fifth skills merciless queen is now merciless judgment and it counter attacks when defending against enemy attacks so that's really good so it's a counter similar to probably like wolverine skills and so forth um it applies to enemies so in, different from here where merciless queen was summoning illusions once again the illusions are gone and now we get hella basically she's dealing bleed damage which is bad business overall i hate to see bleed so i'm going to ignore it from here on now just to let you guys know inside this game when you see bleed damage inside marvel future fight just think of it as a as a wasted stat i don't know why they even still use it she is getting a stun for three seconds she gets 100 chance to, for immunity to all damage she gets a um a damage accumulation buff as well is looking like the same accumulation as um sharon rogers has so it's accumulation received so you're basically going to want to trigger the third skill so that way you start receiving damage she'll receive a counter attack for him as well and that'll be good for you right and then we roll into the fourth skill which was blade of death there's nothing on this skill so you can tell how old this uniform was right there's nothing on a skill now she's getting silence and paralysis so it's going to make her you know optimal probably for maybe those uh abx days we basically need a uh super villain female right so or a, a, a universal female pretty much but we do have thena because i'm going to get to that in a minute but so we're looking at dark flame now she has silence paralysis she gets decreases all basic defenses stacks up to 50 percent, and then she actually gets a recovery of max hp which is the best thing so she has a recovery effect in there while also increasing skill damage by 25 percent and increasing bonus damage by 20 percent. that's really good so now fetter of destiny becomes maiden of chains of chains excuse me applies to enemies incapacitation she gets another uh buffing effect uh healing effect here with another 15 percent recovery of max hp both of these are on a 12 second cooldown time so basically six seconds you'll be able to basically keep hella alive th throughout the whole time so this is looking really good for hella in terms of what she has she also is acquiring her t3 skill inside here let me pull that up for you guys so that you can see it uh her t3 skill i'm, I'm interested to see how it's going to play out we'll, we'll we'll see I, like the one thing that's really weird about certain characters when they get certain skills is you're always concerned with how they're going to play out inside there but especially when they you know the text doesn't really look like it's i don't know like it's like you know Ooh, like it just excites you automatically right so we get a, applies to enemies she gets paralysis uh ignores immunity for three seconds we see that bleed damage which i which again i hate decrease all basic defenses which stacks up to 60 percent. so that's pretty decent and then she gets the uh 80 chance to penetrate barrier and shield effects invincible removes all debuffs and increases basic damage by 150 percent for one attack 100 percent increase to charge rate to accumulate true damage effect on there as well so it is kind of spicy and the skill actually does look pretty good like if i'm being perfectly honest like um it, you know like knowing what hella is the skill actually looks pretty decent in my opinion you basically get to see her summon a bunch of her swords and they become a ball a ball of just death that just rains down on everybody so it'll be interesting to see hella i'm actually really excited to see hella i'm hoping to god that she's um i hate to say this but i hope that she's actually more powerful than thor uh but at the which isn't saying a lot with thor inside this game but 
here's hoping that she's as least as powerful as Thor, if not as powerful as Loki. I'm hoping somewhere in between that between that level or you know just like on that tier i really want her to probably be a powerful character in and of her right to be up there like thena level especially after these buff that's we're going to talk about so next up we're going to look at heimdall right so heimdall uh is getting a uniform he and sith previously received their awakening skills so both of these characters have awakening skills the problem with the characters is that when the re awakening skill got released you guessed it they for some reason chose not to actually give these characters uniforms which made them all but useless their awakening skill worked with valkyrie so both of all both of these characters basically received their awakening with valkyrie as part of her update and her change back to her more comic accurate form instead of the um the you know the mcu uniform but who is going to awaken these characters without uniforms so let's take a look at heimdall first right so this is the heimdall look that we had we're getting a new more you know mcu-esque or i mean a new excuse me a new more you know comics-esque uh heimdall except that uh your boy still uh he's still <laughs> this is gonna piss some people off and you know what i'm just gonna say it he's still black and uh <laughs> and you know i'm pretty sure that there's gonna be some people that are like ah, i'm pissed off about it but if you know you know right so heimdall is looking like he's probably gonna fit somewhere like in the i'm happy you have him but he's not really gonna probably do much but let's 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 talk about it um so basically we've got his new uniform is going to give you a 30 percent increase of physical attack he's going to increase chain hit damage by 15 percent when attacking and he has an activation rate when debuffed applies itself he removes all debuffs right so it's going to be pretty decent inside there anyways right so then we get to his uh firm guardian leadership which previously was a 36 percent increase of all basic defenses now he's going to have all increase all basic defenses by 40 percent and he's going to have ignore targets dodge rate by 30 percent so this should at least make him an effective good leadership ability for um an effective leadership ability for uh mephisto uh, excuse me no world boss world boss lesson right so then after this we basically roll into heimdall's passive skills right so we have heimdall's eyes inside here which which is now going to have a 15 percent dodge rate increase as well as having a more target dodge rate by 40 percent so that's more than a 30 percent buff inside there right now that only applies to self he still has the immunity to uh blind right so then we have Guardian of the Bif Bifrost. He's getting that increased dodge rate by 40%. He's getting increased skill damage by 35% and bonus damage by 25%. And then he's getting a decreased basic damage received by 40%. So we're getting some serious buffs on his second passive as well. He could really end up being really good. We'll have to see where that goes with that. But overall, we'll see what happens, right? So when we get into his first skill, it looks like he's receiving a overall rework and in terms of what he's offering up to the game it'll be interesting to see this after the update rolls through so um his first skill applies to enemies and he's basically getting deals 30 percent bleed damage he removes elasticity uh and then he's getting a physical damage so this skill is still the same as what it was then we get even though it's a different there's going to be probably a different field effect because this is called chain slash the other one's called rejection the new skill is going to be called rejection slice and so then we get strike down which was the, his new skill is strike down his previous one was invasion blockade this one is pro providing paralysis uh ignores uh immunity so that's pretty good world boss ultimate skill there you go and then we get uh but that's it that's all that's on there there's not a lot uh to be on it but this is giving a physical damage increase on that from to 140 percent instead of 73 percent guardian's oath is his going to be his new skill he's going to have stun and silence incapacitation i don't know why they gave this skill because i always hate seeing it but he guards against six hits i really don't know what the hell that's about right but you basically can see here i actually think that the previous skill was probably better in terms of that 30 percent chance of miss of missing attack and then the frenzy buff but they basically took the frenzy buff that's on his on his character and moved it to his fourth skill which is bifrost blast so there's nothing on guardian sword here but you can see that the bifrost blast is going to deal 30 percent bleed damage 100% chance for immunity and then it's going to give you an increase all basic attack by 35% all basic defense by 25% and all speed by 5% so basically they they buffed 
the frenzy buff and they just took it from the third skill put it on a fourth skill that's essentially what they did here like no shitting right his fifth skill he had nothing on this skill anyways to start with so anything would have been better for that and he's basically getting uh 20 percent 30 percent shock damage it's another one of those skills that's just like whatever uh stun 80 percent chance of missing attack so basically you can see where that missing attack over here went on his third skill got moved to his fifth skill and got a, a hefty boost in terms of that because now it went from 30 to 80 percent he also has paralysis on his skill decreases all basic defense by 50 percent and then he applies to himself where he's getting that buff now he's invisible he's also getting a frenzy buff on his fifth skill increasing all basic attack and basic defenses and speed by five percent with a critical rate of ten percent which also removes incapacitation so heimdall should be pretty good and don't forget he does have his awakening skill inside here so this makes him a valuable character to level up at some point anyways especially with his ignore targets dodge rate because you're going to be able to use that against world boss a legend uh no so next up we're gonna take a look at Sif, right she's got a really interesting costume coming coming up we basically got only a glimpse of it but i'm actually looking forward to seeing it um we i as i notated you can see there's some differences in the costume it is it is a different costume if not it's the same costume with more layers basically and more detail so let's take a look at uh Sif inside here so basically her new uniform effect is going to apply to all allies and this is going to be one of the where the good uniforms are that you're going to want to pay attention to inside the game so if you look at her previous uniform it increased at all speeds by 10%. Her new uniform is going to increase all speed by 10%, but it's also going to increase basic damage dealt to boss types by 45%. So effectively, she becomes like a Shuri Valkyrie-like character, where basically you're having her on your team and awakening her is going to basically benefit you just because you have the uniform, not even because of the character's effects. Now, a little disappointing that her leadership is going to probably be more limiting than what it is now so basically her leadership was applying to all allies giving you a 30 percent increase of hp but now it's going to apply to just combat type and give you that 30 percent increase of hp and 35 percent increase of physical attack so uh, we're gonna have to see where this is gonna basically be used it could be decently used with a character like hulk you know getting that 30 percent hp you know getting that 35 percent increase of physical attack on hulk went necessarily be a bad thing right so just think about it in that way so then we look at her uh passive skills inside here where we've got uh Ferris of the fair um let's start out with this one basically she's getting a applies to self she's getting an increased guaranteed dodge rate inside here it's still going to be 30 and 30 but she's also getting increased skill damage by 35 and increased bonus damage by 30 percent her other passive skill, Warrior Defense, is uh, Blade Breaker, and she's basically getting a 30% chance to penetrate with Super Armor, Barrier Shield, All Damage Immune, and Invincible, while also getting Super Armor and increase all basic defenses by 30%. So not going to be this trash skill right here where she's just guarding against one hit. That should let you know how old this uniform is in the eyes of the game, right? So now let's take a look at her skill effects here. So we've got uh, a couple of updates here her first skill is going to be called valiant strike and she this applies to all enemies it's that bullshit bleed damage and then stun on it um she is getting a boost to that physical damage of 85 percent instead of that 60 percent as guardians grace is going to be uh, second skill is now shattering slice she is dealing 30 percent burn damage so that's going to be nice and then she's getting a physical damage buff of 120 of physical attack so that's pretty cool now we move on to warrior's counter attack which is weird because it doesn't say anything about countering attacking anything even though it's called warrior's counter attack right here she's going to begin invincibility uh accumulations of 10 percent of true damage dealt to an enemy uh so that's good because it's damage dealt uh and then she's also getting uh one percent no so it's just the true damage dealt excuse me moving on to her fourth skill it's going to be called asgard acceleration she's going to get that stun for four seconds she's also going to get incapacitation and then 100 chance for immunity to all damage while receiving that physical damage buff of 140 percent instead of 115 percent her fifth skill had nothing on it anyways but now it's going to be victory dash it's going to apply to enemies she's going to deal that bleed damage bleh, 
Paralysis decrease all basic defenses by 60% and applies to self. She actually also gets a HP recovery buff, 25% recovery of max HP, and she gets a frenzy buff on this skill. Increase all basic attacks and basic defenses by 50%, six critical rate by 30%, and removes incapacitation. And again, she already has an awakening skill. This is going to be one of those things that is easy to pass by on people for them not to remember. Next up that we need to look at real quick inside here is an interesting thing. Because if you notice when I read through on Hella and I read through on Sif, they basically have recovery effects. Heimdall didn't. Um, not to have a recovery effect in this game at this point is a big limiter. But Heimdall's badge or his artifact that he's going to have inside this game is going to effectively give him a recovery effect. When his HP is below 60%, activates, increases all basic damage to supervillain faction by 20%, while also recovering HP by 60%. And then you can see Hellas here as she's basically getting the null effect on her uh, badge where when the HP drops, the, uh, when she basically get killed, the HP does not drop to one or below and she recovers HP up to 100% of the recovery for her instinct skill. Uh, goddess of victory she's also getting something similar in terms of heimdall but this is just giving her overall boost to super villains and decreasing the basic damage received now on to something that most players are going to be really excited about especially anybody that paid the 8800 crystals for the epic quest because this you know looking at this definitely slowed my progress down on what i wanted to proceed with for, Th for Thena and my uh, enthusiasm to just go after her was that she just really wasn't that good. She was good in terms of damage, but she wasn't good in terms of uh, being able to stay alive in battle. And they've kind of fixed that and addressed it. They actually made her more powerful and they've given her a recovery effect on her fourth skill. So you can see here on her Spear of Heaven, her ultimate skill, she's now increasing basic damage by 100%. On her passive skill, she's getting ignore target's dodge rate by 20%. So this should really make her effective against um no oh just a little bit more if you needed that uh dodge rate right while also she's going to be receiving a one percent instead of a 0.6 percent uh damage accumulation buff inside there and then you can say she's increasing her chain hit damage even more so this is really good for the game in terms of overall you know uh aesthetics and looks now there's going to be some uh, uh themed updates packages and stuff like that inside the shop i'll go over that in another video um if you're willing to spend your money go ahead and spend your money but if you're not you know you judge your bank account the way you want to judge your bank account i'll judge mine i don't really see anything inside the shop necessarily worth you know telling you about right now um because none of them seem like they're actually worth it uh at all to be perfectly honest with you uh i i would love to sit here and say that you know there there is a a uh <laughs> that, that there was a prize in here the one thing i want to point out for the costumes however is uh the costume options little weird that they basically gave heimdall a native t2 character uh to, to as a uniform option and i even the choice of ronin and baron zemo and america chavez seems a little you know suspect like i mean the only uniform in here that really made sense was Black Bolt in terms of, you know, it's a new uniform. Every probably is going to have it and leveled that up character character wise. But the, the choice in terms of Super Giant being, yeah, I don't know what the hell they were thinking with that. But I think maybe people will have that uniform. She was a decent uh, uh, awakening character that they basically did for the, uh, the you know, the dark obsidian armor set so maybe people will have it um it's just gonna be one of those things but then we look at the uniform sets for sif these are really good options all throughout basically daredevil namor vision doctor strange and ghost rider all of these are pretty much default the best uniform options for those characters and then hella she basically has pretty much the same thing domino's marvel now uniform captain america sam wilson scarlet witch wandavision and even valkyrie fearless defenders meanwhile we look at war machine and we got to question that we just got to question that don't forget about the token event that's ongoing you're going to be able to collect the special icon humanity spare of thena inside there and you also have the chance at a dimension chest four star artifact premium card or dimension chest and a tier two mega advancement ticket depending on how you want to spend that so before we end this video I do want to jump inside my inbox because there's going to be some important things inside here that I want to point out to you guys. 
overall i do need to use them too so that's the reason why i'm pointing them out to you guys do not forget that you have your potential transcended character from your black friday log uh, your black friday login rewards try to say that one 20 times right and you're going to want to make your choice and selections of these characters notice that these are your choices right here of these of this list of characters is basically on you but i would probably put dr octopus somewhere in the top vicinity just because we know we got the spider man movie coming out next week who knows what they're going to do in terms of giving us an update on his uniform other than that i would probably say go with moon knight inside that because he's definitely a good awakened character to have uh, medusa would definitely rank up there i would stay away from shadow shell war tiger um elsa bloodstone she's another one of those characters that they gave an awakening but didn't give her a uniform uh red skull is still a good character to use but i don't see us getting any updates for that guy anytime soon so be wary of that i think for me if you look at my inventory roster over here however i had to look at my total team the one character that i think that i will hunt for because i don't have him yet and i'm just doing this to double check is moon knight so moon knight with his television show coming out soon um you're probably we're probably going to see an updated uniform for him as well and to be honest with you he has a little bit more value offhand right now than doc ock does for me uh so i'm probably i not not probably i am going to select him as my transcendent character selector so yeah guys choose that if that's what you want to do right so where's my moon knight here we go all right so choosing moon knight in order to awaken him mr moon knight he's actually a really good character physical attack wise uh you're definitely a character you want to build up with like i said with the tv show with the tv series the hulu series coming out he's definitely going to be one of those characters that you probably want to invest in if you're looking at long-term investments right so then we have our tier three selector which should be fixed now basically there was a problem with the tier three selectors and some people got them and they were only given biometric token uh, biometrics instead of actually giving the tier three which obviously is a bad thing right so out of the characters that are selected here if you don't have sharon rogers you need to get sharon rogers she's probably one of the better characters captain america with his new phoenix force uniform is highly highly worth it other than those characters you're definitely gonna want to look at captain marvel especially in her new binary or the evil version outfit that she has um for me however i don't have spider-man leveled up to tier three just yet um mostly because spider-man hasn't been good in this game uh he's got a lot of uniforms similar to iron man but he just has not been good he does have the upcoming movie however and i'm hoping that he will be good from there and so that is going to be my tier three selector the truth of the matter is is a lot of these other characters i actually have at level 70 or above so they're basically knocking on you know t3's door but i think the person that's going to have the most investment for me is going to be spider-man you can look at him right here and see basically where i have him previous to far from home uniform i have him maxed out and basically i don't want to spend any of my biometrics uh excuse me my uh i don't want to spend any of my um my essence of dimensions and titan component packs and t3 materials in order to level them up so he's going to be my selector for that so let's get it spider-man t3 they better have fixed this because i'll be pissed off if not <laughs> i'll be totally upset yay they fixed it so there we go we have a t3 spider-man i'm pretty happy about that i'm looking forward to exactly what we'll get from spider-man inside the the new uh no way home movie um <laughs> I can see them coming up with a no number of costumes, even though I actually really enjoy the Far From Home uh, look. It's probably my favorite look other than getting uh, straight up Iron Spidey suits, which I was just pat pissed off that we don't <laughs> that we that we stopped using him. But it is what it is. All right, guys. So basically, we've got about another hour or so before they start rolling out the update. Um, I think it was. Yeah, I think. I think it was going to be 10 o'clock Eastern time here that they were going to start rolling out the update. So basically, you're just going to need to be able to log back in and out of your phone. If I do happen to get in, I'll post a video of that. So but sometimes just, you know, you, it, it's it's luck, man. You get it when you get it. All right, guys. Until next time, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for stopping by. Peace.